Hello, my name is Amy Schmidt, and for my firm project, I have chosen Keurig Dr. Pepper. Keurig Dr. Pepper was formed in 2018 by the merging of Keurig Green Mount Roasters and Dr. Pepper Snapple Group. I've identified four problems the company is facing. Childhood obesity rates, plastic pollution and waste, relationships with licensing partners, and also um, new brands being marketed to new consumers through new avenues. Um, this presentation will address what they are doing about these problems and whether or not it is enough to satisfy the consumers. First off is childhood health crisis. Over the last 15 years, there has been an increase in childhood obesity from 13.9% in 2000 to 18.5% in 2016. You may wonder what exactly this has to do with Keurig Dr. Pepper, but the media has taken a stance against soft drinks as being a primary cause for childhood obesity, even though sedentary lifestyle has a large impact on that as well. So Keurig Dr. Pepper has identified that as another issue on top of soft drinks. So they have partnered with <clears throat> a couple nonprofits to go along with their Let's Play program. So they've donated $38.5 million to, um, to the nonprofits to promote children's healthy, active lifestyles. So the first group they partnered with was Good Sports, where they donated 170,000 pieces of sports equipment. That's to schools, communities, um, local leagues. That's over the last several years. And they've also partnered with Kaboom. Where Kaboom's focus is primarily on building playgrounds and renovating existing playground equipment. Over the last four, five years, they've um, built 405 playgrounds. And even right now, you can go online and apply for their grant where they have another $200,000 to be donated this year. On top of that, they've also joined the American Beverage Association in an effort to reduce calorie consumption. Um, <clears throat> so this is called the Valerie Balanced Calorie Initiative, which is a, a group which also contains Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola, and Pepsi. So they have decided to create more beverages with less or no sugar, and also to provide smaller portion options so consumers can, in a way, consume less calories but while still purchasing KDP's product. They've also installed point of sale reminders for the consumers to be conscious of their activity and consumption um, to create that balanced lifestyle that they're all looking for. And also, we've all seen the calorie count on all of the sodas and drinks nowadays, um, where they're making it more clear to consumers exactly how much they're consuming. Through these efforts, I believe that Keurig Dr. Pepper is doing enough in these areas. They're getting children outside to play more. They're partnering with brands that do have less sugar, less calories per serving. Um, but <clears throat> With reducing the portion sizes, they're also actually increasing the number of containers, which kind of goes into the next problem of plastic pollution and waste. Over the last um, several years, really since 1950 when plastics came on board, the amount each year produced has been growing and growing. In 2015, the world produced 386 million tons of plastic Cumulatively, that's 7.8 billion pound, um, tons of plastic that are still on this earth today. So, Keurig Dr. Pepper is helping with recycling programs. So in some communities that don't have an existing program, they are helping start one by donating funds and receptacles and getting the community more aware of recycling. They are also partnering with research institutions, primarily Purdue University, to find out how, why consumers aren't recycling, what signage, what receptacles can be put in place to encourage more, and if there's more education that needs to be put out to the public to encourage more participation in recycling programs. Producers or consumers of plastic like Keurig Dr. Pepper can only use recycled products that are fed back into their system. So if we're not, the consumers aren't doing their part in providing those recycled materials, companies like Keurig Dr. Pepper can't consume them or reconsume them. <clears throat> in ways that Keurig Dr. Pepper can improve 
on their efforts is to partner with their suppliers, their current plastic suppliers, and encourage more research put into bioplastics. Bioplastics can come from grown crops. Some crops like corn can be um, converted into plastic-like products um, that will do just as good of a job. And there's also some microorganism research that, that have a byproduct that is, again, plastic-like. And also, <clears throat> they can need to work on further reducing the weight of each package that they produce. They've been doing some light weighting over the last 10 years or so, but there needs to be more because, again, we're still consuming more and more plastic each year. The third problem that Keurig Dr. Pepper is facing comes with their partners. <clears throat> so Keurig Dr. Pepper, especially their soft drink line, is able to produce and distribute just over 50% of their volume. The other 50% of their volume comes from bottlers, primarily Coca-Cola and Pepsi, but also some other independent bottlers. With the merger of Keurig Dr. Pepper and Dr. and no, with the merger of Keurig Green Mountain Roasters and Dr. Pepper Snapple Group, they have grown their business and their distribution lines drastically. And that was in, in favor of both the coffee and the soft drink side of their business. And the question is, how does that merger, how is it going to affect the relationship between Pepsi and Coca-Cola with Dr. Pepper? So <clears throat> right now, Coca-Cola and Pepsi are the largest consumer of Dr. Pepper syrup. So <clears throat> if their relationship doesn't continue the way that it's been, there's a high risk that there, there will be some loss in there. Um, and it's, it's always very risky to have one or two consumers consuming that majority of that, um, that volume of your product. Their 20 year agreement comes to an end in 2030. Um, and again, this merger just happened last year. So Coca-Cola and Pepsi have 10 years essentially to decide whether or not Dr. Pepper is something that they still want to feature, something they still want to bottle and distribute when they could be bottling and distributing their own products. Um, going forward, KDP needs to make sure that they're doing what they can to foster their existing relationship because to lose Coca-Cola and Pepsi at this point um, could be devastating. At this time, if Coca-Cola and, and Pepsi chose not to bottle, Dr. Pepper, with soft drink sales being on a downward trend over the last decade, KDP doesn't want to open a new bottle or even really invest in a new line to fill soft drinks if the future of that is still unclear. The fourth problem is new products um, for new consumers and using new marketing avenues. First, the new products. They have recently acquired Core Hydration, which focuses on restoring the consumer's pH level through their pH balanced drinks. This is primarily for the very active and health conscious consumer. Another product is Bi, um, and their antioxidant, low calorie, natural sweetener drinks that are more towards, again, the healthier, the healthier consumer. And these consumers are primarily going to be your millennials. So millennials form an issue or create a problem where these older companies have to find new ways to reach these new consumers. Um, they will not be reached using the same television ads, the same uh, end caps at a grocery store. They're going to need to market more towards where the millennials are. And for the most part, we're talking about social media. <clears throat> social media is where millennials are. It's where you reach them. Um, there are new, <clears throat> relatively new ad spaces on Instagram called Instagram Influencer. So it's essentially you're able to find an Instagrammer that embodies what you think your consumer will be and you have them organically place your products in their posts. So it will be, for instance,
for hydration is looking for that active, that active consumer. So you may find a popular Instagrammer that participates in 5Ks, half marathons, marathons, and have them place your product organically in one of their events. And, and building on that, Core Hydration can also partner and help sponsor um, national and local events such as 5Ks and marathons. You know, and having, giving each one of those runners a free core hydration could, could potentially create a lifelong consumer, especially if, if they enjoy the product. You know, and, and nowadays, especially in the millennials, people are taking other people's opinions over what an advertising agency is telling a consumer a product is. So I'm going to listen to my friend Mary Beth and what her experience was with core hydration as a runner, and I'm gonna I'm gonna believe that before I believe an advertisement, you know, for a paid ad actress telling me that the product is good. So those are the four problems they're facing: childhood obesity, pollution and waste, partnering um, with their licensing partners, and <clears throat> selling to this new market with new products. Um, in some cases, I believe they're doing enough, especially in the in the childhood obesity rate. Um, in the childhood obesity category, but there's a lot to do on the pollution, um, making sure that they're building the relationship with their partners and also in ways that they're reaching this new market with their new products. Thank you.